uses uh, pronouns because as we're going to see in these scriptures, how certain pronouns that Christianity like to emphasize gives the wrong impression because um, just to back up just a little bit, there are many types of pronouns, different types, and they're used in different types of ways. Uh, and we're gonna look at like two or three of them. But like I was saying, uh, the reason, one of the reasons that Christianity can get away with a lot of the stuff it gets away with as far as presenting our Bible, the word of God falsely is pronouns. And if you're not paying attention, you'll overlook it because it's it flows so smoothly as far as the overall lie is concerned. And then again, like I keep saying, the use of certain pronouns enable them to do so. And see, while they uh, emphasize some pronouns, then there's another type of pronoun that they seem to totally ignore. So we're going to start at the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 2. <laughs> First and foremost, all praise to the most God, giving him all praise and glory for this Sabbath day and the Sabbath lesson. So the book of Acts chapter. Chapter two, and we're going to look at verse 21 only right now. All right, the book of, the book of Acts chapter two, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever. That what? That whosoever. Mm -hmm. Start at the beginning again. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, stop. Okay, so like I said, this right here is one of Christianity's favorite scriptures because of the pronoun that's in there. The pronoun that we just read the scripture one more time, one more game. All right, the book of Acts, chapter 2. Verse 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so we're talking about somebody being saved. And the pronoun that is in this sentence that we're going to pay attention, pay attention to is whosoever. Whosoever is a pronoun. And whosoever is what you would call a relative pronoun, meaning it's relative to a specific noun because, again, a, a quick sidebar, a pronoun takes the place of a noun in a sentence. It's a substitute. But like I said, Christianity liked to play on pronouns to get their false message across. So. The pronoun in this verse right here that we're paying attention to is whosoever. And like I said, it's a relative pronoun, meaning it's it has some type of relationship to a specific noun. And that noun that it pays attention to will either come before it or it'll come after it. Read this verse one more time. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so again, so Christianity, everybody included right here, because it says whosoever. So whosoever, who are you talking about? That gives the indication of anybody, everybody, somebody, nobody. Whosoever gives the indication that it includes everybody when it stands alone by itself. And that's what Christianity banks on. Because it says it in the word whosoever, and they know that whosoever could mean anybody when it stands by itself. 
because that's the indication I get. Whosoever, who is that? Nobody specific, right? But like I just stated, whosoever, it's a pronoun, but it's in relative pronoun, meaning the noun or the subject that it relates to either comes before it or it becomes or it comes after it. So read verse 21 and then read verse 22 together. Okay. All right, chapter two, verse 21, starting at verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's any and everybody. Ye men of Israel. Stop. Who is the whosoever? Ye men of Israel. Everybody. Ye men of Israel. The English. Ye men of Israel. The Romans. Ye men of Israel. The Greeks. Ye men of Israel. So again, the point is, and we're going to read all of 22, Christianity loves to do this, and it does it. It does it up to this very day. And we're going to get into a specific example that happened just a few weeks ago that everybody's talking about. The whosoever, when it stands alone by itself, could it definitely does mean any and everybody. But again, giving explanation, whosoever, it's a pronoun, it's a relative pronoun. There are many types of pronouns. This is just one type. And so when this whosoever stands by itself, it gives the indication that it's universal, it's everybody and anybody, until you put it with who is referring to or who it is relating to or the subject who it is relating to. One more time, read 21, read all of 22 together. All right, the book of Acts chapter two, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Keep Jesus reading. of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Okay, so again, and I have to say it repeatedly because the lies repeat it all the time. Anything that's said over and over and over again, it starts to get embedded into the long-term memory. This is embedded into the long-term memory of Christianity. Whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, you just got to believe on Jesus and any and everybody, because that's who whosoever refers to by itself, can be saved. Christianity loves pronouns, certain pronouns, because certain pronouns, again, I'm going to be repetitive a whole lot during this, this uh, teaching. This type of pronoun can be used and it indicates that any and everybody is included, barring none. Nobody's excluded. All of y'all come, everybody, until you put that relative pronoun with who it is actually referring to or related to. It's related to ye men of Israel. That narrows it down tremendously. Ye men of Israel, well, that's kind of narrow. Everybody in the world, and you just talking to the men of Israel? Because again, Christianity loves to make our Bible, the word of God, universal. Especially when it comes with salvation, being blessed, going to heaven, all that good stuff. That's, that's for everybody. And whosoever verifies that it's for everybody, only up until you relate that pronoun to who it's actually referring to. Let's go to Romans 10. Pronouns, which is the title of the lesson today. Pronouns. You're probably going to look at some of these words in a different light after the day. Huh. Pronouns. Let's go to Romans 10. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 13. 
uh, verse 13. For whosoever. Oh, here we go again. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever again. We in Romans 10. Go up to verse 9. See, we starting down low. We're getting right to the point because, again, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, again, that same relative pronoun, which stands by itself in this sentence, what does it indicate? Everybody. For everybody shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Or for anybody shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what whosoever gives the indication. So we're going to work our way up. Go to verse 9. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, so in verse 9, that thou, that's an old time pronoun. Thou means you, you, okay, that's, okay, you who? Well, you, me, yeah, you, anybody, yeah, you. So if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. What you want, okay, because you can be singular as in a singular person, you, or in, in a Southern vernacular, when we say you, we don't say you, we say what, y'all? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Exactly. Y'all. So that means more than one person. So if that, if y'all shall confess with thy mouth that Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Y'all shall be saved. Pronouns. And Christianity he can run all day and all night with specific ones to get their lying message across. If y'all believe Y'all can be saved. Who is y'all? Well, I don't care who the audience is. Y'all is whoever I'm talking to, right? Who's ever in the sound of my voice, right? Thou, an old time pronoun, which means you. I'll put it in vernacular, y'all. We're working our way up because, again, we started at verse 13, whosoever. That's anybody. Verse nine was you or y'all. That's any and everybody. Who is specifically this is referring to? Because again, I'm going to say it again. Relative pronoun. It has a relationship with whoever the main subject is, which would be a noun. And most likely, and in this case it is, it's going to be a proper noun. So we're working our way up. Let's go to verse one. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse one. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. How deceptive is this? How deceptive is this? You tell me whosoever, I believe that because you'll read it. You will read it. And I'm going to give an example of that too that just happened a few weeks ago. You'll read one scripture and get the meaning from that one scripture as it stands alone by itself, never giving full explanation. So all I got to do is tell everybody, I'm reading it out the Bible, I ain't lying. It says for whosoever, don't it? Don't it say it in your Bible? Mm -hmm. It says it in mine. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, I ain't lying. I'm reading it. You reading it. It's in my Bible. It's in your Bible. Whosoever means standing by itself, any and everybody. 
It's a pronoun. Going to verse nine, you, thou, y'all, that's in and everybody too. So if I read nine and 13 together, yes, let's do that. Read nine and then read 13 together. Okay, the book of Romans chapter 10, verse nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then verse 13 says what? Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, we reading it out the Bible, y'all. <laughs> we not lying, y'all. Those, we read two scriptures in the same chapter and it gives the indication of any and everybody. But again, a relative pronoun has a relationship with the specific subject. And the specific subject is going to be a noun. And most likely, it's going to be a proper noun. Like I, I think I said it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Language arts, proper noun, somebody's specific name. If I say he, that's a pronoun. If I say yes, Ron, that's a proper noun. If I say whosoever, that's any and everybody. But then you talking about the men of Israel, the God for Israel. Wait a minute, you done narrowed the, the playing field down tremendously because we done moved away from them pronouns and we done got into some proper nouns. And so we now know who we talking to. It ain't any and everybody. It ain't y'all come. <laughs> Hmm. And where did Acts 2 and 21 come from? And where did Acts 22 come from? This is a this is like an education lesson because you got to know history. Where'd that come from? Let's go to where it came from. Let's go to Joel 2. But we emphasize in the pronouns because. Christianity love certain pronouns and then certain ones, uh, not so much. Let's go to Joel 2. And let's read verse 32. The book of Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever. Here we go again shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Okay, so even in this one verse right here, it says whosoever, but was everybody, all mankind living in the Mount Zion area? Was all of mankind living in the Jerusalem area? Because this is where this was stated. So if I make a statement for this house right here where I am, does that mean everybody in this city? Nope. For one, everybody in the city didn't hear these words. Everybody in the world didn't hear these words. It says in Mount Zion and it says in Jerusalem. Doesn't it give an indication I'm only talking to? But that pronoun, there you go, whosoever. So in Christianity, I got this pronoun whosoever in Joel 2.32. I got this pronoun in Acts 2, 21. I got this pronoun in Romans 10, 13. Ain't that precept upon precept? Okay. <laughs> oh, but Christianity don't even know nothing about that anyway. But ain't it precept upon precept? Yeah, it is. But you got to give the full explanation, the full explanation, because... Truth with a little bit. All you need is a, like a smidgen. 
of lie is what? Not truth. Truth with just a smidgen, all you need is a smidgen of a lie. It's still your what? Right. What Christ said, a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. Well, you don't need a whole lot, just, a little. just a little smidgen. And that's what Christianity has been working with for a long time, a long time. They'll read out of this Bible, but if you listen long enough, it's always going to be a smidgen. Just a little bit of leaven. And it's going to work its way through the whole lump. You got a pre-sale? I'm just going to read something real quick. Okay. Uh, Second Timothy, we all read this, but uh, Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But just that smidgen, just a smidgen, just a smidgen. I don't even know how big or small a smidgen is, but whatever size it is, that's all it takes is to, to turn the truth of God into a lie. Because again, read verse 32, Joel 2, 32. Okay, the book of Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom, whom, whom the Lord shall call. Stand alone by itself. However, go up to verse 30, uh, 27 and read 20. Well, let's start with 27. Read 27 first. All right. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Wait, there you go. You narrow it down again. You said of Israel. Does that mean Greece nope. or China? Nope. We always name them countries. What about Thailand? Nope. What about Australia nope. and New Zealand? No. Nope. Verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 28. Verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Okay, so right now, we emphasize in the uh, relative pronoun, and how it relates to, it's a pronoun, but it relates to something specific as far as sentence structure or subject matter, it's gonna be a proper noun. And in verse 27, it says, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. So if I'm saying this, and this goes back to 32, if I'm standing in the midst of Israel and I'm saying, and it shall come to pass that whosoever, who am I talking to? Israel. I'm standing in the midst of Israel. I'm making a proclamation. So who am I talking to? Israel. Pronouns. And guess what? We coming back to these scriptures because there's some more pronouns up in there that we need to look at. From there, let's go to John. Another favorite, you know, the, the, whether you're talking about nowadays or back in the day when whatever recording artist you had that you liked and they had like certain hits, like year after year or every two years they come out with a song and it's a hit and they got a whole lot of, and they have so many hits that after a while they put out an album and it's called what? greatest hits. <laughs> the greatest hits. Well, these pronouns that we're looking at right now, these are Christianity's greatest hits. They're great because like I said, they've been working these hits for a long time and they've been working for a long time. But guess what? Time is up. 
And let me say something on that. You know how even though you don't listen to certain music, if you like on if you listen to the radio, they play it over and over and over again mm-hmm. and it gets stuck in your head. So mm-hmm. you know it. So when we mm-hmm. get on the highways ahead, you see the people that you know ain't in the Bible, but everybody know John 3 16, but don't even oh. know what it really means. Because it's the greatest hits. If you play that song <laughs> over and over, I know about all it's just in my psyche. Oh, did I say John 316? No, you didn't, but I said John, didn't you I? You said John, so okay. What so what what you talking about, John 316? I didn't even say that. That's one of the greatest Yet. hits. Let's go to John 316. <laughs> it's the greatest hit. Mm-hmm. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. What does it say? The book of John, first, just like it. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, greatest hits because of a pronoun and in this case a noun they put whosoever with what believe Mm -mm, no they put whosoever with what in that sentence or in that verse they put whosoever with the world so okay so i'm reading it read one more time the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, so I'm reading that. And again, whosoever could mean in and everybody, but now, oh, right now, we got world in that same verse. So that whosoever is the world. Case closed, right? Whosoever believes and God so loved the world, that whosoever is the world. Case closed. I'm not lying. I'm reading it. It's in my Bible. It's in your Bible. I didn't write my Bible. I didn't write your Bible. But you seeing what I'm seeing, it says whosoever and it says world in the same verse. So that means that anybody in the world, can be saved. It's a greatest hit. Until. Let's go to, let's stay in the book of John. Let's go to John 18. Hey, uh, Brother Ben, you know? Yes, sir. You want me to your brothers, I mean, your sons to read, right? Uh, Oh, they done? Hold on. They'll read in a minute. All right. Let's go to John, that same, the same book. And if Christianity was to give a teaching on the book of John, you would see that word world in there a whole lot of times. And it's only like one or two times where it's talking about somebody else other than Israel. But when you read the book of John, that word world means Israel. Let's read uh, John 18, verses 19 and 20. The book of John 18, starting at verse 19. Mm-hmm. 19 at, and 20. Starting at verse 19. Eighteen, nineteen, right? Mm-hmm. No, right. 19, 20. Oh, 19. And 20. But chapter 18, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 19. The high priest then asked Jesus of his of his disciples and of his doctrine. Verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. Wait, he spake openly to who? I spake openly to the world. So that must mean everybody. Let's keep reading. I ever taught in the synagogue. Wait, that's narrowing it down some. And in the temple. That's narrowing it down some more. Whether the Jews always resort. Wait a minute, stop the press. He said, I always spoke openly to the world. Where is he speaking? In the synagogues and in the temples 
And then who is he speaking to? Whether the Jews always resort. Read. And in secret have I said nothing. We got world right here. We got world right here. And that world is in the synagogues. That world is in the temple. And who's in that temple? The Jews. Hmm. But let's go back to John. Let's go back to the hit, the hit record and read it one more time. The book of John chapter yeah. three, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever in him should not perish but and, have everlasting life. And then go back to John 18 and read verse 20 again. The book of John 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. So the Jews knew what he was saying. The Jews were the ones in the synagogue. Okay, well, maybe, maybe uh, it was Jews and other folks. No. It just says the Jews. And that's the world he was talking to. But let's get some more. Clarity, of course. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 17. Isaiah 45 and verse 17. And the, see what that say. Okay. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel, England, but Israel, Japan, but Israel, Tanzania, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Wait a minute. We got Israel and the world in, a, in the same verse again, just like we did in John 18 and 20, where Jesus said, I spake openly to the world. And he was speaking in the synagogue, in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. So like that line from uh, 48 Hours when Eddie Murphy was talking to uh, Nick Nolte on the phone. Yeah, I'm hanging out down here. This is where the brews hang out. Jesus was hanging out where the brews hang out. The Jews in this case. He was hanging out where the Jews hung out. It says in the synagogue, in the temple, where the Jews always resort, meaning they hung out there. And that's who I'm talking to. And that's the world. And that's the ones that's going to be saved. But again, those pronouns. Uh, let me read the precept real quick. Okay. Uh, we're going to the book of Psalms, chapter 90 and verse 2. And it reads, before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So that lets you know that world doesn't mean the earth or everybody. You have sea world, you got the animal you world, you got specific. all these different worlds. You gotta be specific. So the world that Hamashat was speaking of was the world of, the, the Bible is speaking of is, is the world of Israel. This world that I'm talking about is who? Israel. But no, whosoever. I told you Christianity love pronouns. I told you that. Love pronouns. And they love to separate. In this case, if I separate it, leave it all by itself. I can make all kind of doctrine. And I can make up all kind of truth. And I can read it from the Bible. And you can see that I'm not lying because I'll quote it verbatim from the Bible. I'll read it. And it says whosoever. And like I just stated, it says whosoever in my Bible. I didn't write it. It says whosoever in your Bible. I didn't write that either. So you know whosoever standing by itself, separated, cut it off, means any and everybody all the way up until 
you prove that that whosoever is a relative pronoun, which means it's relating to some type of specific proper noun. And then that narrows it down. Because whosoever is any and everybody. The world is any and everybody. Until you throw in that Israel stuff and that Jew stuff. Pronouns. Christianity loves them. From there, let's go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. We're talking about pronouns. It's a language arts class. <laughs> And what that that one uh, that one scripture I can remember was that right now what Christ said, I pray for mm -hmm. God, I pray not for not the world. for the world. Because that's in John too. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, in the book of John, the word world is mentioned several times. It's only a couple of occasions where that word world is not referring to Israel. Yeah, that's in John. I know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. but I don't know what it is right off hand. But yeah, yeah. I'm praying for him. I, wait a minute. John 17. Nine. Okay, there you, let's go there. So how can he say he loved the whole world when in this scripture he says uh, John 17, 9 I pray for them. <laughs> I pray not for the world for, but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine. And see, oh man, remember this scripture because I got to go back here because you got some pronouns up in here that we need to look at. Remember this scripture. We got to come back to this because some more pronouns up in there. I told you. But let's go to Matthew 11, 11, verse 28. The subject of the lesson is pronouns because. Christianity love certain pronouns, it's different types. And certain types of pronouns Christianity has and does play with. And they separate them from any and every other scripture, just got to get them by themselves. That's like, uh, and it just popped on my mind, when you look at the nature videos, what do the lions do when they going after a herd? They go for the weak one. Are they going for all of them? Nope. No. They got their eye pinpointed on one. And what they going to do with him? Separate. They're going to get that bad boy separated. Because that's lunch right there. Or dinner. And that's what Christianity does with these certain pronouns. I'm going to separate you. Let you stand by yourself. Again, and I'm going to read it out in my Bible, and it says the same thing in your Bible. And so I can't be lying because we both reading it out the Bible. But I got that pronoun separated. I don't want it with anything else. I want it by itself because it works best for my lie if I separate it. Pronouns. All right. Matthew 11, verse... Is that what I want? That's what I got written down. Let's read it. Which verse? Uh, verse 28. Uh, the book of Matthew. Oh, chapter, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, so why'd I go there? I almost forgot. I got it written down. All is what? Everybody. And it's also a pronoun. But it's an indefinite pronoun. Before we talk about relative pronouns, I told you it was more than one type, several types. And we, we working with two or three of them. This is the other one. All is an indefinite pronoun. So where some uh, whosoever could mean anybody, well, what do you think all means? Everybody. <laughs> all of y'all. All of y'all. All of y'all. Come unto me, all 
ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So, and it's in red, so we know who's talking. And so it says all, and we know who he's talking to, right? All of y'all. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Keep your finger there because I may be coming back to Matthew 11, 28. But let's go to uh, Isaiah 14. And so it just popped on my mind just now. So, uh, yeah, that was good. Am I in presenting this? Am I? Uh, am I twisting anything? Because we going over these pronouns, but then when we do go over these pronouns, not separating them, we're attaching them to something, or like I said, in the sentence structure or the context of what we're reading, who, who are these pronouns referring to? Are we being specific? And if we are, are we verifying it with scripture? Because again, don't want to be guilty of what you complain about. Complain about Christianity twisting and uh, misconstruing the word. Well, what are you doing? Not the same thing. I'm giving explanation. Because explanation is never given with John 3.16. Never. It says all, and it says world. That means everybody. Come all ye who are heavy laden. That means everybody. Not when you put it in context as far as, okay, who, we gotta, we, we gotta narrow it down. And that's what the Most High does with his word. He narrows it down to the pinpoint. Even though you may not understand a broad stroke of a scripture, the Most High has a way of presenting it. And those who are what you just said, study to show yourself approved, mm -hmm. rightly, dividing the word. rightly, dividing the, word. dividing the word, then you're going to get to the pinpoint. And so there, there won't be any wiggle room. There won't be any margin for error because it's a pinpoint. You know how big a pinpoint is? Yeah, got I got his hand up. Okay, go ahead. Ben, you got your hand up? Oh, yeah, that, yes. What's the scripture? Uh, we're going to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, verses 1 through 3. Okay. This is Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and I will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them into their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them and the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors verse 3 and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wilt to serve. Go back up to one and read one one more time. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and I will yet choose Israel, and I and set them apart in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Drop down to three and read three again. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear 
and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. And then go back to Matthew 11 and verse 28. This is Matthew 11 and 28. Yeah. Come unto me and all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who is he talking to? We got all, which means any and everybody. But when we go and put it in context, context with who specifically are you talking about? I know you said all. But you said, I will yet choose Israel in Isaiah 14 and 1. And then when I drop down to verse 3, so Israel is the one, when it comes to pass, is the one that's going to what? Shall, re shall give the rest from your sorrow, from your fear, from your hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve. Who is he talking about in Matthew 11 and 28? All of y'all talking about Israel. You remember that comment you made uh, that they said that why the Israelites go all over the Bible here and go there? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, you're going somewhere else. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Remember that comment they made, right? Yeah. So I'm going to read uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Oh, it okay. says... You don't have it, do you? No, I didn't. I thought you was going somewhere else. All right. Said, okay. Yeah. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk. So they're not even drinking milk. So you have to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, this people, his people. So that's why we jump from all over the Bible, because God gave us a, a specific way to teach and read and learn this book. It's like a puzzle. You have to put it together. And on that note, how ingenious, how how intelligent is that where you got a piece over here mm -hmm. and a piece way over here and then a piece like in a third and fourth place, but they do what? Come together. They fit together. Well, the scripture said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Can you repeat that scripture? The one I was just reading. All right, the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse, I mean, so like it. Book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 through 11. You're welcome. Okay, so all of these pieces fit together. But again, with these two types of pronouns that we're working with right now, the relative type pronoun and the indefinite pronoun, all, nothing, none. If I separate it by itself, I can put in my little leaven. I can put in my little lie. And it'll work how many times? Every single time. Because how many times have you heard John 3.16? All your life. Huh? All your life. So I rest my case. It works when? Every single time. It's like it. Every time. Uh -huh. It's a rock. Yeah, I, I think Brother Ben got to raise his hand. Oh, that, it was just, yeah, it was weird. I, I looked up, it was. Okay, you got another one, Ben? No, no, I, I didn't take it down just so we could okay. read. Okay, all right. Okay, so again, we talking about pronouns. And certain pronouns that uh, Christianity has been uh, using, and they use scripture. You got to have a little bit of truth in there to, you know, make it good. You got to have a little bit of truth. But it's that little bit of lie that has been working against us as a people. It's that little bit of lie. It's like the math equation. If you're doing the math equation longhand, 
he mess up one one point, up, one the point. is gonna be wrong. One call. point, and what you gotta do, you gotta go back through every single little step. Where did I mess up? You got to. And see, that's what Christianity doesn't do. No, I ain't gonna show my work, and no, I'm not gonna do it. I want the whatever plus equals. Bam. This is all kind of educational lessons. I thought it was just uh, language arts. Mm -hmm. We got in the history now. We in mathematics where you're learning something because Christianity ain't going to do this. It ain't going to do this. I ain't got time to do it. And even if I do have time, I ain't going to do it because it's going to mess up my life. Pronouns. Relative pronouns. Indefinite pronouns. From there, let's go to Matthew 28. Here's another greatest hit. Stayed on the charts for 300 years. How long we been in America? 400 years. Okay, well, it's been, <laughs> it's been on the charts. Again, and, and I'm trying to draw these analogies that make it more relatable, more understandable. Again, think of your favorite song. Even recently, I don't know how they do it now, but back in the day when you paid attention to songs and it stayed number one for like three and four weeks. Billie Jean, three and four weeks. You went deep. Huh? You went deep with that, Billie Jean, Michael huh? Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't even, I said, said Billie Jean, how you know it's Michael Jackson? Because it was a hit. It was a hit. And we go again. You can't get away from it, can you? Mm -hmm. It was a hit. Jo Jay, who's that? I ain't got a, you got a question or a comment? No, just want to read the scripture. Let me read the next scripture. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to the greatest hits, and it's uh, Matthew 28, verse 19. Uh. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy and the Holy Ghost. Okay, stop. It's the greatest hit. Why did Jesus say go into all? It says all nations. They separate that all, which is a preposition preposition which is a pronoun and it's an indefinite pronoun which means it says all so what does that mean just that Everybody. all mm -hmm. this is a greatest hits verse right here and when it stands by itself it means exactly what it says it doesn't require any explanation does it well, let's give one and let's see if it makes a difference. Hold your finger at Matthew 28, 19. Go to Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah. Chapter one. I'm saying it slow so I can get that. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah chapter one. Verse 8. The book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? I'm sorry. Uh, Are no, you good? Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 8. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Stop. <sighs> I don't really need this explanation right here because I got enough where it says all nations in Matthew 28 and 19, right? That's all the explanation I need. Again, I'm reading out the Bible. I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. It's in my Bible. It's in your Bible. It says all nations. Why? And it's in red, so we know who's talking. But who is he talking to and who is he talking about? Why does... 
Jesus say, go to all nations because read verse eight, Nehemiah one again. Nehemiah one and eight. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad amongst the nations. We did transgress. And so this is the result of it. We were scattered abroad among the nations. Among the nations. Is that saying the same as all nations? Where I'm telling you to go teach. And why am I telling you to go teach there? Because that's where Israel is. Uh, no, I don't. Go ahead. All right, the book of James, chapter one, verse one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Why is Jesus telling the disciples, go to all nations? Because that's where we are. And I'm being inclusive. We is, guess what we is? Me. Us. We is, uh, what, guess, well, guess what us is? You speak in pronouns. You never paid attention to them before. They're important. Pronouns are important. Saying we and us, well, what are they? Parts of speech. They are pronouns. And that's the subject of the lesson. And again, Christianity has used pronouns to further their life. And we got, we done went over some greatest hits and they've been working a long time. And for too much of a point, they still working. They still working. Because when you can go out and we see it on video and I'm just, and the brothers are trying to bring us back into who we really are, but you get cussed out, you get cussed out. Of, and then, okay, got to keep it balanced. Sometimes the brothers going out to bring the word, they be cussing out the folks too. Got to tell the truth. Got to keep it balanced. And they wrong. But still yet, the point is going out to try to wake our people up. You ain't heard you were an Israelite before. You don't know it. And if you do know it or have heard it, you heard it one or two times. And since the lie is embedded so deep, you got to hear it more than once, two and three times. Because the lie you heard more than two and three times. We got to at least match the lie with the truth before we can supersede it. And say that again. We got to at least match the lie. You've been hearing the lie forever. We trying to match it. We got a long way to go because the lie is embedded into your thinking to the point where you don't even think like an Israelite and get mad and protect the enemy, the real enemy. Well, all of them ain't that bad and you, we ain't no better than they are. And, and it goes on and on, the, the, the madness. And then again, and I have to say I relate to that a little bit because when I first came in the truth, my statement was, oh, they just trying to turn everything white black. I said that to myself when I was doing research, but I kept on researching and it kept on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something's rotten in Denmark, as they say. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This says the Israelites are going back into slavery on ships. Wait a minute, wait a minute, connect the dot. And again, I have to bring up the story and it happened again just last week. Okay, wait a minute, the word says that the Israelites, it's in the Bible, the Israelites, 
the young men are going to be hanging out at the head of the street is what the word says, but the head of the street is what? Street the street corner. It also says those same young men, Israelites, that hanging out on the street corner are going to be acting like bulls, meaning they acting a fool, acting crazy. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Wait, that's talking about Israelites, but that sounds like who? Us. That's a pronoun. Snared up in prison houses. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That sounds like who? Us. That's a pronoun. Hmm, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been going to church all my life. I ain't never heard this. Never. Not even one time. Wait a minute. Because if you give explanation on a lot of these scriptures, it's going to pop into somebody's mind that this is, which is a pronoun. And Christianity don't want you to know that this is us, which is a pronoun. They never wanted you to know. That's why, first of all, they didn't want you to read. I'll tell you what it says. You ain't got to read it. I'll tell you what it says. And I'll give you an explanation of what it says. You know, slaves obey your masters. I'll explain that to you. And for centuries and for decades, whoever's in these so-called churches, mm -hmm. they are not going to venture from these same scriptures and they're not going to venture from these same explanations. So it gets carried down to the point to the day. Well, you're just trying to turn everything white black. Are we all God's children? <laughs> Them pronouns again. Look back to the script. All of y'all, all nations. Why are they going to all nations? Because if you transgress, that's where I'm going to scatter you. But now I'm trying to gather all of Israel back to one. So where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going to go? I got to go where? To all nations, because <laughs> that's where we at. That's where the brews are. So these pronouns that Christianity loves to play with, and they play very well. Talking about wise to do evil, yeah. Um, IUIC went to uh, Pastor Jennings Church a couple of weeks ago. And so last week, Pastor Jennings gave a message in response to IUIC coming to his church, surrounding his church. And so his sermon was all about that. And there were several points that he stated out of his mouth, because I listened to it. I listened to the whole sermon because I didn't want to just get an excerpt, you know, cut out a section and then that's blowed up because of whatever. But I listened to the whole thing. And there was a part in him trying to discredit being an Israelite that he went to, uh, and we going there. Let's go to Romans 9. Let's go to Romans 9. Because he did read this, but again, like I stated, his whole sermon was to discredit 
those of us who have found out that we're Israelites and we're trying to wake up everybody else, but somehow or another, even well, no, it's it's, it's scripture because these are the Pharisees back on earth. Um, downplayed the importance of us being Israelites to the point where, like it is, they want to discredit it in every way, form, and fashion. So he went here, Romans 9, let's read verses 6 and 7. He read this. The book of Romans. Romans. Okay, go ahead. Huh? Romans 9, verse 6. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Okay, so he read this. He read those two chap those two verses together. And his emphasis was like I stated before, trying to discredit those of us who have found out we're Israelites. And so when he read this, he made the statement, well, I'm more of an Israelite than you are. And then he gave, you know, a lot of whole banter, blah, 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 blah. But this is the basis of what he was saying. Everybody that claimed to be Israel ain't Israel. Okay, we know that. We say that ourselves. We know very well. And it's stated two thirds of Israel ain't going to make it. We say that ourselves, but he's he read these two verses to discredit all of us who claim to be Israel. And being in whatever denomination he's he's promoting is better because, like he stated, I'm verbatim quoting, uh, I'm more of an Israelite than you are. Okay, so he went from there, and then we're going where he went to. He went to Romans 3. Because it ain't no difference between uh, us and them and uh, again, trying to discredit Israelites. So we read Romans 3 verse 1. Read Romans 3 verse 1. Romans 3 and 1. What advantage then have the Jews? Of what profit is there of circumcision? Okay, so while he had the reader reading this right here, he kept chanting nothing to the point where a few of the congregants joined in. What advantage, what advantage then hath the Jew? Nothing or none. He was either saying one or the other, either none or nothing. Guess what none or nothing is? Give you one guess. It's a pronoun. He, and the, he had the gentleman read it like several times. And while he was reading it, he was saying nothing or none. Because I said, and if you're not Israelite, then you, some other, it's Christianity. So like I said, Christianity loves pronouns. I told you that. They were reading this verse. And while he had his reader reading this verse, he kept chanting, nothing or none, nothing. What advantage have the Jew? Nothing. What advantage is the Jew? Nothing. And it, he just kept doing it for a few seconds. Because Christianity loved pronouns. I told you that. But I was waiting. I thought he was going to go to verse two. He didn't, but we are. Read verse one and verse two together. Romans three and one. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Verse two, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. He did not read verse two. I remember he jumped the verse nine. I don't know where he was reading. If you saw it, the guy was reading something. And that's why while he was chanting that none or nothing. And I don't know where he went from there because I was lost. Yeah, he went from one all the way to nine. They connected them two together. Okay, I'm glad you cleared that up because I didn't know where he went to. He didn't go to verse two. That was the answer. 
yeah, if you look at nine, he paired them two together to deceive um, the congregation. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad you cleared that up. And so let's read nine. Okay. Yeah. Three and nine. Nine. yeah, read nine. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Hmm. So that was the, again to prove his point that being an Israelite meant nothing. And he even did some more stuff. We don't need to go into that. But I'm glad you brought that up, Ben, because I didn't know where the guy went. He didn't announce the verse nine. He went immediately from one to nine. And I was waiting for verse two. I didn't know where he went. But his point was, okay, Israelite, uh, what advantage? Nothing. What advantage? Nothing. Nothing. None. And then he went to verse nine. Yeah, okay. And so explain verse nine, though. Like it says, uh, what then are they better than they? So what this is speaking of is northern and southern Canaan. No one know why for because remember, uh Southern Canaan thought they were better than mm -hmm, Northern Canaan because mm -hmm. they called them uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is explaining, not the, the other nations of the heathen. Okay, so he wouldn't even he didn't even go there. Because we are all under sin, and sin is a transgression of the law. So he must the law he had, only given to Israel. It had to be the northern kingdom. Yeah. But he didn't explain that. He did not explain that. His point was to drive home that these crazy Negroes outside of my church last Sunday ain't nothing. That was his point. Because Christianity loved pronouns. All, none, nothing. Pronouns. And like I said, it's been working for a long time and to a detrimental extent, it's still yet working. All right, from there. I always think these are gonna be real short lessons. I really do, like 45 minutes. I really do. You gotta let the spirit in. Man, but like I said, Christianity loves certain type of pronouns like the what we've been talking about right now uh the relative pronoun where it you know separated by itself stand alone and then i can prove my lie and they like the indefinite pronouns doing the same thing separated so it can stand alone but you know what there's another type of pronoun and christianity don't really get into it and if they do they don't get into it correctly there's another type of pronoun. It's a possessive pronoun. So let's see what these possessive pronouns are all about. Let's go to Amos chapter seven, verse 15. Amos chapter seven, verse 15. The book of Amos, chapter 7, verse 15. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, go prophesy unto my people Israel. Hmm. Guess what? We got some pronouns up in this joint. And we got some possessive pronouns. My people Israel. My people Japan. Israel. What about my people, um, Arabia? Israel. What about my people, Bangladesh? Israel. You'll read all these scriptures and you'll emphasize a whole lot of things, but you will never 
or hardly ever. And if you do, you do it with a twist. Will you emphasize my people Israel? I gave this analogy a few weeks ago and I got the participants here with me today. Pops, gonna make a declaration and here's the declaration. All of my children, no, I'm gonna give a million dollars to all of my children that hear my voice now. I say it again. Pop's gonna make a declaration. I'm gonna give a million dollars to all my children that hear my voice now. How many of us are gonna get excited? <laughs> And the one that's laughing is the one that's going to get excited. Everybody else just, you know, coming to me. who is going to get excited? I'm going to repeat it again. Just, you know, so we, Pop's going to make a declaration. I'm going to give a million dollars to all my children that hear my voice now. Who's going to get excited? Ain't nobody saying nothing. Ah. And that's a pronoun. And that's what Christianity does. Because they'll take that same statement, I'm going to give a million dollars to all. They'll miss a couple of words that hear my voice now. Leave out two words or ignore them. I'm going to give a million dollars to all that hear my voice now. You done left out two important words. What were the two important words? My people. And even more important than one word. Israel. No, my. Because we're dealing with pronouns. That's a possessive. So who's going to get excited by that statement? Anybody? <laughs> huh. Who's going to get excited? Not me. Yes, Ron, you getting excited? Oh, he said all that hear his voice. Now, you ain't getting excited? No. no. Then, you getting excited? Yes. <laughs> well, see, that's what Christianity does with these pronouns. They play with them. And certain ones, they ignore. We just read, go prophesy unto my people, Israel, who's going to get excited about that? My is a pronoun. My is a possessive pronoun. You got to be included in my. Forget people in Israel. You got to be included in my first. The analogy I just gave, you got to be included in my, because you could hear, okay, I'm going to give a million dollars to all children that hear my voice. And since Pop's older than all of us, okay, hey, I think I qualify right yeah. there. No, he said my, 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 you got to, you got to, you got to be included in my first. You got to. If you ain't part of my, then. I ain't talking to you. If you're not part of my, I'm not talking to you. You can jump up and down all you want to. If you're not part of my, I ain't talking to you. It's a possessive pronoun. From there. Told you we were going back. Let's go back to Joel 2, 27. The book of Joel chapter two, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Mm -hmm. And that I am the Lord, your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. 
I'm in the midst of who? Israel. Hey, Matthew, want to uh, read next? Okay. I'm in the midst of who again? I'm sorry. Israel. So Israel, and then when you get to that last part of that sentence, and my people, do you kind of kind of think sort of kind of that my people and Israel are what? One and the same. But like I said, you got to be included in the my first. If you ain't included in my, then guess what? Again, I ain't talking to you. You jumping up and down like I done said something you, you going to take a part in. I ain't even talking to you. I'm in the midst of Israel. And guess what? There's another pronoun up in there. I am the Lord. Who's God? Your God. Hmm. You know, you know what your is. Your is a possessive pronoun. That I am the Lord, your God. And you and my people. And we got one more pronoun we need to look at. Because he says, I, I am the Lord, your God. And what comes after and? None is a pronoun. None is a pronoun. So even if Christianity would read this verse, and sometimes they do because they include themselves in my, they include themselves in your, and they ignore none else because none else, you ain't talking to me because I'm part of mine. I'm part of your. Wait a minute. I know that poverty, you've been in captivity, you've been oppressed, you held up in prison houses. Your young men hanging out on the street acting a fool. Of all those examples I gave, and keeping it real, does the average white person relate to any of that? No. And I'm keeping it real. Keep it real. I got a nephew. And the day is a day that we don't celebrate. His birthday. And guess where he is right now as I am speaking. I give you one guess. in prison. We as a whole, as a whole, I don't care who you are, who cannot relate to that? Huh? I just told you, I got a nephew, blood nephew, my brother's son, as a matter of fact, his firstborn son. Right now, as we speak, as I'm speaking, and today is his so-called birthday, guess where he is? Oh, God, I forgot about that. Yeah, his name is Jared. So again, like I said, when you explain these scriptures, really, especially the pronouns, and you break it down, we had this same issue last week when we went out explaining to a brother who was older than both of us. Yeah but broke down that same scripture about the young men hanging out on the street corner. And he was reluctant to answer, not because he didn't know, but because he did know. And you could tell he knew. Wait, that sounds like us. It's a pronoun. And I keep telling the story of the young man when I went to my grandson's graduation. I'm telling him he's an Hebrew, he's a Hebrew Israelite. And I gave the same scripture. Young men hanging out on the street corner, acting like wild animals. And he did like this. He did like this. Wait a minute. I'm talking about Israelites. Why, why are you doing that? You got a person? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. 
Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he command thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. They're going to be what? And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So again, if we were to break down all these scriptures to where it give the full meaning, not only of what it means, but who are you talking to? Are you talking to whosoever, which means any and everybody? Are you talking to all, which means any and everybody? You're talking to a specific nation. You are talking to a specific nation because everything that's brought out, man, I can relate to that. Man, that sounds like us. That sounds like us. But again, like I keep repeating, Christianity play with these pronouns. Certain ones, they keep separated. So in and of itself and by itself, it's all of y'all, everybody and anybody. And then the possessive pronouns, which we're going over now, well, it, it don't really mean that. It's always that state, usually. It don't really mean that. Okay, then what does it mean? It don't mean that, then okay, explain then what it does mean. Pronouns. From there, let's go to Luke 1. Hey, Matthew, you're going to read this. We got you, Matt. Luke 1. Okay, yeah. Luke 1, verses 6, start at 68. Luke 1, verse 68. Put this forward. You're mute, Matt. You're mute. All right, hold on. My bad. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, yeah. we hear you. All right. You said it started at 68. Yeah, one verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his, his people. Stop. Israel. People. So we got a pronoun up in here. Guess what his is? His people. His car. His house. His children. If it's his... Possessive pronoun, his. And so who is his people? Israel. Do I got to go through these lists of other nations again? Do I have to always do that? Well, kind of, sort of, yeah, because again, like I stated, the lie has been told enough times where we got to be at least comparable with the lie, and it's going to take us a while to do that because the lie is embedded in our thinking. So again, it says Lord God of Israel. Does it say Lord God of Burma? Is that a country? Yeah, it's a country. I've never heard of that one. Is he the Lord God of uh, Solomon Islands? Nope. None of these countries. It always says of Israel. We in the New Testament. And then that's what some like to play on. Well, that's Old Testament. We in the New Testament now. Well, we in the re reading in the New Testament right now. And it says, still says, Lord God of Israel. Hmm. And it still says, whose people? My people. His people. His people. Hmm. 
Working these pronouns today, boy. Drop down to verse 71. Verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hates us. Okay, verse 71. You got all these pronouns. Who is the we? Israel. Who is the us? Israel. Israel got enemies. Israel got enemies. And obviously, they're much stronger than we are because, huh? Because we sin. Because we sin. And so, therefore, we need. <laughs> Salvation and a savior. Read verse 74 for us. Verse 74 that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. His people, Israel. The we is Israel. The us is Israel. Okay, those uh, those aren't possessive pronouns. The we and us. One is a subject pronoun. The other one is an objective pronoun. Breaking down these pronouns. Because we need to. Christianity ain't going to do it for you. When they going to explain this. They move swiftly and quickly through the line. So you ain't got time to comprehend. Let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. No, the we is Israel. The us is Israel. His people, Israel. His possessive pronoun. From there, let's go to what I got. What time is it? Um, Let's go to Psalms 147. Jojo, Jojo, you're going to read next. Book of Psalms, verse uh, chapter 147. And verses 19 and 20. Working these pronouns. And they're different types. So the book of Psalm 147, verses 19 and 20. He soweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto, unto Israel. He hath not dwelt so, so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known him. Praise ye the Lord. Okay. Uh, again, done veered off from the possessive pronouns, but we still got some pronouns in here we need to pay attention to. Because verse 20 says, he hath not dealt so with any nation. Any is a pronoun. That's everybody else or every other nation other than Israel. Israel. Not dealt any nation. I mean, I don't deal with you like that. So all these other nations, all these preachers, and all these other nations that aren't from the house of Israel. Wait a minute. I showed my, this was, wait, I showed my statutes to Jacob and my judgments to Israel. Wait, what are you, wait, what you doing? I don't deal with you like that. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And they don't even know him. That's why they got the lie going. That's proof of that. That's proof of that scripture right there. They got the lie going. They don't know his statutes. They don't know his commandments. That's why the lie is going. 
And like we say, when you tell one lie, you got to tell another one to cover that one. Well, Christianity has had no problem with doing that. Okay, you got precept bring. Uh, Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. But unto the wicked, God says, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? They have not known them. Or that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth. They have not known them. Seeing thou hatest instruction and cast my words behind thee. They have not known them. These pronouns. And the they in verse 20 of Psalms 147 is the other nations. They is another pronoun. See, we need to differentiate. Okay, who's talking? Who's being talked to? Who's being talked about? We need to break this down. We need to know. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, uh, like the New Testament, they are epistles, which are letters. So if I mail a letter to you, that letter is addressed to you, not everybody else, right? So that's what we pe people don't understand. These are letters to his people. On that note, I wasn't going there, but since you said that, Let's go to Acts 15 and 36 to verify that. Acts 15 and 36. What you just stated. Book of Acts chapter 15 and verse 36. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. First of all, our brethren, when you see the word brethren in scripture, that's talking about Israelites. That's Leviticus 25 and 46. That's Ezekiel 11 and 15. Again, when you see brethren in scripture, that's talking about Israelites. Leviticus 25, Verse 46, Ezekiel 11, verse 15. So what Yeshuaan just said, these epistles, we get, this is why we got Romans. This is why we got Ephesians. This is why we got Colossians. This is why we got the Corinthians and the Philippians and the Thessalonians, because Paul is talking about the brethren, the Israelites, where they visit them people in them places. That's why you got those those books in the Bible. You're not talking about heathen other nation, uh, Romans, Ephesians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians. We reading it right here, giving you full explanation. Read it one more time. The book of Acts chapter, what it was? 1536. 15 and 36. And and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And if you go to the all these verses, this is Acts chapter 15 from 16 on. Read them and you'll see that they're going to the Jews. Read uh, Romans 10 and 1. Romans 10 and 1, go ahead. Yeah, Romans 10 and 1. Now this is Paul speaking as, as well. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said you're in the book of Romans, mm -hmm. but you said brethren. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. So Romans are brethren. No. Uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say, have God cast away his people. God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. But see, you ain't going to get this breakdown, not in Christianity, not explaining it how it is. So why do we have Colossians, Romans, Ephesians, Philippians, Corinthians, Thessalonians? Is because Bar Barnabas and Paul visit the brethren every city where we have preached the word of the Lord. And guess what he did? He sent letters there to them. Our brethren, guess what our is? That's a possessive pronoun. But you ain't gonna get this breakdown. 
Not full explanation. Again, if you do get one, it's going to be twisted because I got to keep the lie going. It don't take but a little bit because you got all these lies going. And it even don't even have to make sense. We just listen to lie after lie. And it don't even make sense. Not really. But then it do make sense because you don't know scripture. Mm -hmm. So it don't matter. It don't matter. Pronouns. Okay. Because what time is it? It's getting late. All of that being said, talking about pronouns and all of this concerning Christianity and they lies. What that got to do with you? What that got to do with me? Because it got to be brought home, meaning, okay, like I just asked, what it got to do with you? What it got to do with me? Let's go to Romans 8. And remember, we're talking to the brethren. Let's go to Romans 8. Make it make sense. Romans 8, let's read 16 through 18. Is that what I want? Oh, not in the right chapter. I'm reading some of this. That don't look like what I want. Okay, yeah. Romans 8, 16, 18. The book of Romans 8, chapter 16, verse 8 uh, through 18. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 17. And if the children then be heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So back up to verse 16. Verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, so again, like I just stated, all that's been said, all that we've been going over, talking about all these pronouns. What that mean to you? What that mean to me? Because like I stated before, when we break these scriptures down and be truthful and not twisted, then just like that young blood at the graduation, you be doing this. Man, that's me. That's me. And guess what me is? <laughs> A pronoun. And it says the spirit itself beareth witness with what? Our spirit. Our is a possessive pronoun. All of this is bearing witness with our spirit. Man. Wow. I'm a child of God. And if children heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, because when you explain these pronouns, whether it be uh, reflective or indefinite, indefinitely the possessive pronouns, and this, these words are what? Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they bear what? Witness. Witness with what? My spirit. Wow. Our spirit, which is a possessive pronoun. And so, again, uh, like I stated earlier, reading the scriptures from here on out, uh, pay attention to them pronouns. Who's talking? Who's being talked to? Who is being talked about? And if it's a pronoun, make sure you <laughs> attach it to some specific proper noun. So you know who's who and what's what and what's going on. Because again, like I've been saying, Christianity been lying a long time and it's been working a long time because we didn't know the scripture. 
And first of all, we didn't know the scripture was talking about us. Us? Me? Wow. Yeah. So with that being said, that's the lesson. Let me close out with this one scripture. Pronouns. All right. The book of First Chronicles. Come on. I don't want to say uh, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If my people, Second Chronicles, isn't it? Seven and fourteen. Yeah, seven and fourteen. Whose people? My people. Yeah, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Pronoun. So again, like I stated, uh, putting a little bit more emphasis on these pronouns when you're seeing them in scripture again, who is the most I talking to, talking about. And with that being said, Shabbat Shalom. More praise. Shabbat Shalom, brother. More praise.